Alright, we're back. So, as people say, third time's a charm. Welcome back to Fancy Gear, and hopefully this time the internet's not gonna fail and everything's just gonna be smooth sailing. <laughs> so let me just double check here if we're live, and from the look of it, yes we are. Awesome. So welcome back everyone. Today, as you've probably already seen from the, from the title, we're gonna be looking to Thread Pull Executor. So, um, as some of you probably already know, this is a way to run threads in parallel and a way that Python actually uses to that you might need a thread. So let's look into a code in here, shall we? So I'm just gonna pull this down a little bit because of my camera that it's right on top of my cam my uh, screen. And what we're gonna look into here today is a function that is gonna be slip and print. Sleep and print. So a picture that you are going to pass along a value to this function and that you're going to just print that function, that number out, right? But before you do, something's going to happen. So usually that is actually a query to a remote server. So an HTTP request, something like that. So to try to mimic that situation, we're going to import the time library, or rather, so from time, we're going to import the sleep function and let's say that we're going to do some random um, sleeping here. But rather than doing just, yeah, you know what, second sleep, let's actually make this look into look a little bit better. And let's do a random time to sleep. So we're going to import the random library. And, and we, from that random library, we're going to import the choice function. So then from the choice function, what it actually means is that we're actually gonna, hi Daniela, <laughs> we're gonna actually try to choose something from a uh, list in a random way. So we're gonna choose from a list of one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, and six seconds. Awesome, right? So something's gonna happen that it might take from one to six seconds to happen, and then later on it's gonna print that number. So let's try that out. So let's run that as is. So if name equals equals main. So this is just to call out this function here as a script. So sleep and print. And then we're gonna just call, call it for one. So we're just gonna print back one. And let's just save that out as test in my desktop, shall we? Awesome. So now let's try to run this. So then Python test pi. So when we do no such file or directory, of course, I have to be on my desktop. Desktop, there we go. Let's try that out now. Still no file. So let's look into the name of the file here. It's, oh, it's just test. Oh, how did I do that? <laughs> so let's just rename that real quick. Move test into test.py. Awesome. And all right, so it is running now. So it just ran randomly, and it actually chose probably six seconds because it took quite a while here, which is fine, you know. Like we we can run a time timed function in here, and we're gonna see that this is gonna take you know a random time time random time to execute between one and six seconds plus, you know, the time to actually get the uh, function ready and, you know, get everything running. So it's fine if you only have one time that you have to, you know, trigger this execution. But picture this. Picture that you not only have to run that for one once, but rather you have to run that for, let's say, 10 times, right? And every time that you call it, it's going to be a random time to to uh, run this. Now, if we try to time this, of course, potentially, this is going to take 60 seconds or a minute. Well, it was four seconds now, but that was <laughs> that was definitely not the intention here because that was way too quick. 
So when, whenever we actually run test.py, and for some reason it is like only throwing me, did I save it? Yes, I did. Didn't I? Why is it only doing for one? Okay, let's see. I'm probably doing something wrong, guys. Please help me out here. So from random time, def define sleep and print. Let's just do parallel. Let's just call parallel function here. And that parallel function is going to be the one that actually calls that out. Something's weird on the main execution of this file. So I'm just going to move things along here. Let's try to make it a little bit easier. All right. So now if we try to save and run that, hopefully this is going to take potentially something. This is so odd. This is so odd. So for x times in the range of 10, so 0 to 10, we're going to be executing this multiple times. Oh, I'm saving this in the test file, not the Python one. I'm so sorry. I am so, so sorry. <laughs> this is such a silly mistake. All right. Yep, I trust myself. Oh, Lord. I truly apologize for that, guys. So as you can see, things are here looking the same as they did before because I was actually working on the wrong file. I would never catch that. <laughs> for x in a range of 10. All right, so again, same thing here. So this is potentially gonna run up to 60 seconds. No, not code again. Okay, everything happens live, doesn't it? All right, so of course I'm not gonna be waiting here for the entire 60 seconds, but you're gonna see that it's gonna start running linearly um, uh, one at a time, and it's gonna just wait for that and then print. Now, what if I wanted to do everything in parallel so I don't have to wait for that? So this is what Python actually gives us from the, their concurrent um, function. So from concurrent, we can import futures. Now in the futures module, what they actually give us is something really cool called a thread pool executor. So we're gonna instantiate that here. So with futures dot thread pool executor, with, with max workers, so the number of threads that can run in parallel here, and we can put in any number, I'm going to just put 10 because it's, everything is going to run at the same time, as thread pool executor or executor. And what I'm going to do is for each of this, uh, for each number in this lip and print, what I'm going to do is actually going to executor, I'm going to just submit the run into executor. So what I'm gonna what I'm doing here is actually I'm submitting the function slip and print with the argument x to a thread pool executor. What it's gonna do is actually gonna create instantiate a thread, grab the entire context that he, that it needs from the function definition and the, the arguments, and then run that in parallel for me with a maximum number of workers of 10. That's pretty much it. All right, so if we run this now, you're going to see that something funny is going to happen. Now it's running, of course, and we should see now 7, 1, 6, and random numbers appearing at the same time, and it only ran in 6 seconds. And you're going to see that this is probably going to be a very consistent. Why is that? Because at maximum, what is going to happen is it's not going to be waiting for every single thing to run at the same time. It's just going to run everything at once whenever they are submitted to the thread pool executor, and then it's just going to run everything in parallel. And they're asking me, hey, Guy, by the way, I don't want to print something, but I just want to return a value. So what you could do, just double checking if everything is working fine. Yeah. So what you could do <laughs> is uh, you can actually grab the future intention of returning of that value. So what what we can do is actually use a just a plain list. So uh, execution list, and what we can do is just grab the futures future executions of those. Uh, and append those to that list. And now 
what is going to happen is each one of those instances of submission are going to be returned to this list as a reference of that running thread. And if I want to actually grab those as they complete, as they complete, we can actually do something really cool here, which is uh, for uh, completed in futures as completed of the execution list. What it means here is that as it completes something, just return that to me and let me just handle that, that result. What I can do is just print the, res the completed future and get the result of it because we know for a fact that it's completed. And now instead of printing, we're gonna just return it. So now what it's gonna do is Let's see how that goes. If we time that out now, it's going to instantiate all the threads. And then as one of each of them are going to be completing, it is going to be returning all that for us. Again, the order is going to be completely a mess, but it's, this is expected as everything is running in parallel. So yeah, that's it. That's how you use thread pull executors. You can use that in pretty much any function that you want out in, in Python. You don't need to use async, um, the async um, terminology <laughs> because you know those aren't really in parallel, but rather you can use threads, which they technically are. All right, thank you everyone. I hope you guys like this live. Uh, hopefully I'm, I'm gonna try to make more of those. This, this is just the first test but I hope you liked it. All right, thank you everyone, have a good one, bye.